Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be drafting only players that are American born and also every time, aka twice, I went to play now, the game crashed. So kind of worried that that might happen mid video or mid draft. Really hoping it doesn't though. That would suck. So I don't know if that's a me thing or if they did something with an update. I have no clue what's going on, but regardless, yeah, I tried it twice and didn't go for the hat trick. And because of that, we're gonna have to select the team the old fashioned way. We're going to the holding down of the right button on the D-pad and then letting go at any given time. It is the Seattle Kraken, which I don't know if we've used them at all this year. If we have, it's been once at most. You know, you really think Jabroni would have caught on by now, but apparently not. So I am gonna go ahead and switch that to off. All right, here we go. What draft position do I think we're gonna get? 13. I think I guessed that last draft, actually. I don't know why that number came to my head twice in a row, but I was not even close. And Hatrick Kane, the guy making like 2.6 right now, would have been prime. But unfortunately, no can do. Tage Thompson. 90 overall at 1.4 million. I don't know if I can say no to that. Our next pick is going to be pretty close. So I'm going to hope that John Carlson is still there. And I'm going to try to grab him. Because last time, if I recall properly, he lit it up. And when defense lighted up, it's always a good thing. So that's going to be my strategy. But we're grabbing Tage first. Here we go. Moment of truth. He is still there. Boom. Now we've got a stellar forward, stellar defenseman. Shane Wright went already. Hello? Yeah, I got a bit of a feeling that Vancouver's gonna be at the bottom this year. Because there's always that one team that really preps for the future. However, none of them are ever aware that <laughs> it's a one-season sim. So, sorry about your luck. Well, our goalie's gonna be 86 overall. Which is not ideal by any standard. But it could be worse. This is one of those drafts where I have to take Pavelski because Captain America just has to be done. So we're kind of doing Tage a little bit dirty here by drafting our top defensive pair first. He's not gonna have a whole lot to work with offensively, but we're going with Jacob Slavin. 5.3, has abilities. The hope is that him and John Carlson rip it up. I am going to draft JT Miller to be our first line left winger. And if Captain America is still there, I'll take him now, even though he's probably gonna be there for several more rounds. Okay, hold that thought. He is in fact gonna be there for several more rounds. So in an interesting turn of events, I'm gonna draft Kristoff Kreider. And then I will draft Captain America. He better still be there. I swear if he's gone now, fuming. Here we go. Yeah, all right, I expected that. You could probably even get him next round. Potentially even the round after that. I don't really know how long he stays there, but not willing to risk it any longer. Cam Atkinson could be a second line right winger to play with Kreider and whoever I get for center. Ideally a playmaker. Wouldn't that be nice? I would if I could, David. You already know that. So unfortunately, we had to drop just a little bit more in overall than I was expecting, but it is what it is. Jack Rozovic, 82 overall, gonna be our second line center. Perhaps. I guess we'll find out when we actually go in to edit the lines. But as of right now, that's the blueprint. We're going to go with Scott Mayfield. Right-handed defender. 82 overall for the second pair. I am not very excited about this team right now. But maybe that will change when I go in to edit the lines. We still have $38 million of cap space. And we're pretty decently into the draft. So I'm going to go with none other than Jeffrey Petri. I'm just kidding. I know it's pronounced Petri. So I just took Nick Letty to be on the second defensive pair, completely oblivious to the fact that I took Petri, the pick literally right before that, as I was mispronouncing his name twice on purpose. You cannot make this up, ladies and gentlemen, only on the Man of the Rich channel. Felino was born in the States, but it says he's an American born Canadian hockey player. I am going to avoid that one, although I would really like to draft him. What better way to start off a third line than with Philip Kessel? Don't mind if I do. We actually have quite a few options here. We have Craig Anderson, Jack Campbell, DeSmith, who I think I'm going to draft. Jonathan Quick as well. Yeah. Mm. Craig is just a legend, though. And he's one overall better. All right. I convinced myself. Let's get some Nick Jensen action going, and then our defense are completed. Our goaltenders are completed. We just need to finish off the third line and draft ourselves a fourth line. Connor, Sheary, and Kessel could light it up together, right? 
Yeah, they could. So normally, you know, I like to pay attention to the average age of the team. So that way we're not just drafting all veterans and, you know, taking the top player every time, stuff like that. And I also feel like it just balances out the team better. They normally play better, I have found. Regardless, throwing that whole rule out the window this time. And I'm drafting TJ Oshi. If you don't remember that legendary shootout, then I don't know what to tell you. But it would be... Totally wrong of me not to select him. I'm going with Apple because I need you to feed a bunch of apples to Phil Kessel. You probably won't even be on his line, but maybe, who knows. Let us go with Big Rig. Won three cups in a row in real life, so maybe he will bring some of that to this locker room. That draft seemingly went by too quick. I feel like there's no way I only need one player. With our final selection, we're taking Adam Gaudet. 78 overall centerman. And we have a lot of cap space, so trade deadline might be our friend. So there's our team, and if you want my honest opinion looking at it right now, don't believe this is the one. I will not, however, count the lads out too early. Let's go ahead, edit the lines, and see what the what chemistry did I think was going to happen, because this ain't it. So I believe this was the original plan, but I don't know how I feel about it. Maybe I will just go with best lines or something like that. Well, no, because then we lose the plus five. We do get a plus one here, but really that's not that big of a deal. And I could leave that line intact. Could take Pavelski up here, move Chris Kreider over, and whoever has the best face-offs here. 75, not too shabby. You're now a centerman. But they get a plus one with Cam in the middle. So maybe I'll leave him there. All right, we'll run with it for now. See if it works or not. Probably won't. And then we can update accordingly. When did we get Suter? I mean, he is eligible, but not who I drafted. And it turns out that he is actually more fitting than who I drafted because I drafted one too many right-handed defensemen. I seem to be very good at that, but I'm still going to put Mayfield in. And that is the defensive core we're going to run with. In net, we've got Spencer Knight, Craig Anderson. Tage is going to get the most points with 68. I don't think we're going to get a whole lot. And... The team gets 42 wins, and we might make the playoffs if our division's really weak. That's my prediction. Watch us somehow just be an absolute weapon. We started out 3-0. Okay. So yeah, this is why I didn't count them out too early, but I'm also not going to jump on the bandwagon too early either, because I've seen this before, all right? NHL, I'm used to your tricks by now. The team will start off like 32-1, and and then go on to lose 28 straight, and we're right back in the middle of the division. I feel like Spencer Knight could grow as the year goes on as well, right? Like if he's tearing it up in net, I believe there is the potential to maybe go up to like 87. Probably won't be anything too extreme, but still. Nice little four game losing streak right there. We beat the Bruins, okay. So yeah, we're starting to lose a lot more than we're winning at this point in time. But maybe we'll turn up the Jets again before the trade deadline. Our division is also not weak. So that is working against us. Yeah, maybe I'll make a trade at the deadline. We're actually doing all right though, you know. I'm going to set us to be a buyer. Here we go. Enter the trade deadline. Who is available? Hoomst is available. Okay, so pretty sure that none of these players are eligible. Ryan McDonough and Seth Jones are both available, but... That doesn't really help our team that much. I mean, we do have the cap space to take on Jones's contract, but should we is the real question. He does have four abilities. That makes it a lot more tempting. They pretty much want nothing from us, so that's amazing. But I will give you whoever this is. Yon uh, I'm trying to avoid that, though. Maybe I won't do that. I could give them Suter, and that will not work. Wait. No, I think we're just going to have cap issues regardless, and they're not going to retain on an eight-year deal, so it would have been nice, not in the cards. Yeah, there's really nothing I can do here. Okay, well, actually, you know what? I haven't added a player yet. Let's add a defenseman, throw in Suter again. Still no. Yeah, I think we're kind of trapped, which is weird, because how did we have so much cap space before? I suppose we're running with the team we had. And we were fifth in the division, so playoffs looking questionable to say the least. We can go over some other trades though. There you go, Jones was moved back to Chicago with a third and Kulak in exchange for Edvinson and two seconds. We also got Pellick heading to the Flowrider Panthers. Wow, we're actually not even fifth. 
We're one below that. 33 wins. We're going to need to be hot post-trade deadline. And you already know historically hasn't really gone that way. I mean, we're kind of cooking though. Holy, the poor Dallas Stars got beat by us three times in three weeks. We're actually winning a lot of games. Is our division just nuts or what's going on here? Oh, we clinched. We're in. Let's go. We finished with 96 points, fourth in the Pacific Division. Not too shabby. Let's check out the entire league. Carolina cleaned up. Who's on their team? They have Connor Garland, Casey Middlestat, and Pasta. All right. And then they have Couturier, Bergeron, and Besser. Jonathan Taves. This is probably the weirdest team I've ever seen in my life. That right there shows you how outrageous our division was. Because we finished 7th in the league. And the 22nd placed Colorado Avalanche with 39 wins on the year managed to sneak in. That is ridiculous. I've just been wrong every step of the way in this video. Shane Wright and the Vancouver Canucks. Clearly knew what they were doing. Tage Thompson only had 61 points. Pavelski was almost point a game though. 79. And then JT Miller had 62. John Carlson 58. So yeah, we're definitely one of those teams that doesn't score a lot, but just doesn't allow a lot. Our goaltender stats have to be good, right? What? Maybe it was just all around low scoring games. In the entire league, Jari. 921 save percentage and 46 W's. Actually, Varlamov also had 46 and he had a 917 save percentage. Kale McCarr with 83 points leads defenseman by quite a bit. He's on Eric Carlson's team there, the San Jose Sharks. And speaking of EK65 right there with 71. And then we've got Yossi and Dougie. Very nice. Nate Mack hit the 100 mark. 48 tucks, 52 apples. And then Clayton Keller with 99 was with who? Had to be playing with someone that put up points, right? Just did it himself. The first four games, let's sim past and see if we are still alive. All right, we will be alive, but never mind. It's a best of three. Sim up to game seven. If it makes it there, it does not. Seattle moves on to round number two with a relatively easy win over the St. Louis Blues, and we have the Avs in the conference semifinals. As we do, let's sim past the first four games in hopes that there is not a sweep, and there is not. Will we exchange two games and head to seven? We do. Wow. Let's go, Seattle. If we make it to the conference finals with this team, I am going to be blown away. Let's go. Cameron scores. And so does Phil. How about that? Another power. Do it again. Just score again. What a first period from your Seattle Kraken. Some depth goal scoring. I guess Cam Atkinson is second line, but still. We were able to kill off a penalty. Got a power play of our own. An extended power play. Which Colorado did phenomenal at killing off, apparently. And we are headed into the third and hopefully final period of play with a 2-0 lead. Can't be doing that. Can we stop taking penalties? Nichushkin scores. They have 34 shots? Oh dear, don't do me like this. Thank you. Killed it off again. Appleton! I don't know why this is happening. Our first line is not scoring. No. Yes! Spencer Knight, I am so sorry that I said anything about you being 86 overall. You are a legend. The San Jose Sharks. We were actually debating on calling our... Three on three team, the San Jose Sharts. But I don't know if we'll do that or not. Anyway, you know the drill. First four games of the conference fight. Come on. Come on. No, don't let them push seven after that. Don't let them push seven after that. You had one job. Well, we're here. We're back. It is a game seven. Which, by the way, if we win this, we move on to the Stanley Cup finals. Who saw that coming? Not this guy. Hoffman scores with under a minute to go in the first. That is a killer. Horvat's gonna bury one now. Guys, we were up 3-0. We actually deserve to lose now. I'd be curious to know if there has ever in the history of the NHL been a reverse sweep in the conference finals. That would be lunacy. Imagine how fuming the fans would be that they were one game away from the Stanley Cup finals and then they lost four in a row. Well, you just witnessed it here with the Seattle Kraken. 
What a disgrace. And it will be the Buffalo Sabres that go on to win the Stanley Cup. The Sabres finished ninth in the league. Let's have a look at their team. They have Sagan on the... What am I looking at? Now this is interesting. Joe Pavelski went up in overall. He's at 88. And he put up 17 points. So did John Carlson and JT Miller. Tage Thompson. I feel like he just never really puts up points. But he got 15. Not too bad. Gaudette with 11. This man is not to blame whatsoever. A 929 save percentage. Definitely pulled his weight. And we just couldn't get it done. Igor Shosturkin at the top here. Gustafsson for the San Jose Sharks. Really? Latang and Makar had the same amount of points. But Latang did it in significantly less games. What a playoff run from him. And your Conn Smythe winner, Victor Olofsson. 31 points in 25 games played. Tyler Sagan also had 31, so maybe it will go to Tyler. Suppose we'll find out. And what better time to find out than right now? There's your team awards. Conn Smythe goes to Victor Olofsson. Okay, Let's see if we see any... Seattle Kraken logos. We don't. There is your playoff tree. The Sharks actually got dusted in the finals. The Sabres went to seven in the first two series and then kind of just made light work of the Caps and the Sharks. So probably would have beat us as well, but I guess we'll never know. Now, will we? Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And on that note, I'll see you soon.